Thank you, everybody, for joining our today's community hangout. It's a real pleasure to hang out with you and to talk with you about everything Everclear. So thank you very much for joining. And today, we've got a very special guest with Max from the Everclear team joining us. So thank you very much, Max, uh, for joining us, for joining today's uh, community hangout and for hanging out with us. And we've also got Tommy and Andy from the community administrators joining us as well as co-hosts. So um, thanks, everybody, for joining and for hanging out with us today. So for the agenda, I would say let's get started with Everclear. As you all know, Everclear just recently has rebranded. Um, it was formerly Connext. We are now Everclear. And um, we wanted to take the opportunity to give everybody or to allow everybody to catch up and to better understand Everclear before we really get started. So um, we wanted to give you a quick introduction to what Everclear is and what the key benefits of Everclear are. So for your better understanding about Everclear, um, we are faced in the, in the entire ecosystem with the rebalancing problem and Everclear is providing a solution to this. So what Everclear is, it is the first clearing layer in the space and Everclear coordinates the global settlement of liquidity between blockchains. And in doing so, it solves fragmentation for modular blockchains. And by solving these fragmentation issues, um, modular blockchains are confronted with, Everclear is able to um, net capital flows between blockchains, which means that for every $1 that is transferred um, on the average blockchain on a daily basis, about 80 cent of this um, can be netted. And in doing so, Everclear is significantly reducing the costs and giving everybody a competitive advantage who is using Everclear. So if we jump in right into our presentation, into our community hangout, um, I wanted to give a quick shout out to Max, who is joining us from the team today. So it's a real pleasure to have you on with us, Max. Um, you're the ec ecosystem lead for um, Everclear. And um, perhaps if you want to, um, if you want to give us a quick introduction of yourself and what your story with crypto is. Hey guys, good afternoon, or good morning, good evening, depending where you are. Um, yeah, good to see some familiar faces and voices here. And uh, yeah, nice to be nice to be here in general. Uh, thank you for the intro, Stefan. I think there is a a lot of a lot to digest in what you said. You know, a lot of definitions there, but we can definitely explore a little bit better what, what all the terms mean and what they imply for the for the clear and for the industry in general and for the community. Uh, about two lines about myself. Uh, my name is Max. I'm Italian. Um, joined at my in my previous life. I was working at uh, uh, General Motors in the uh, financial sector, and then I bumped into Bitcoin because a friend uh, told me about it back in 2017, uh, and that really didn't click to me. I I remember going home, starting to talk to my flatmates at the time. They were working in finance, and they were saying, "Oh no, that's just a scam product. Don't don't even touch it. Like don't worry, just use by." Uh, by by you know, um, international criminals, and so I kind of like forgot about it. Um, and then uh, in year later, one year later, more or less, I I heard about Ethereum instead, and that's what really clicked for me: the idea of this programmable money that you can do stuff with. Um, I think that that was for me was the mind blowing kind of aha moment. I said, okay, I want to really be part of this. And so I started to work for some. Crypto startups uh, in, a, in, in a you know back and forth kind of uh, uh, phase uh, between you know the crypto world and then getting outside in the bear market and then rejoining until I bumped into what used to be Connect at in uh, 2021. Fell in love with the idea with, with the concept of interoperability. What was trying to solve, which is ultimately about the scaling blockchains. Uh, and I understood that that's what I wanted to, to work for and to work with. And so um, joined initially uh, Connect as a, as a growth marketer and then I grew my way into the company as, as the, the company expanded, the ecosystem expanded, and also our vision and our um, 
yeah, our product kind of evolved across the years. And here we are, four years, four, almost three years later. Yeah, very interesting. Thank you so much for sharing your story. I think that's really a, an interesting story to get into crypto. I think either Bitcoin or Ethereum many uh, got many of us involved into the ecosystem. So that's yeah, quite interesting to hear. And for all the listeners out there, I think um, it's fair to say that Max has been a real um, rock star in the ecosystem and for Connext and now for Everclear, um, providing very, very different talented services to the ecosystem in very different capacities and different roles for both Everclear and Connext formally. So thank you very much for all the effort and everything yeah, that think, you've done for the thank ecosystem. You, Stefan, I appreciate it. So yeah, sure. It's a very present journey so far. Yeah, and it's so glad to have you with us. So yeah, thank you. And if we jump in a bit into our discussion about what Everclear is, and you mentioned we, we should give a bit more nuance to all these um, terms that are thrown around in the quick introduction, um, perhaps we should get started about um, what the key problem is or what do you think that the problem is um, with the adoption of chain abstraction? Um, for context, everybody, um, everybody's context, we've been working on chain abstraction for quite a while. So um, what do you think is um, a major blockage um, that is stopping or this, that is um, hindering the adoption of chain abstraction? Yeah, let's, um, let's first have a look at uh, why we want chain abstraction to be adopted, right? Like, what is the what is the vision behind it? And I think the 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 thing that the whole industry has realized is that well, it wasn't hard to realize. But the, the thing the, the 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 where the industry is converging as an idea is that using this thing is too complex. You know, whatever you want to do, you really need a master degree in. Uh, uh, understanding what gas tokens are, what the chains are, you know, why there are why your funds are on one chain and not on the on the chains with of the app that you want to interact with. Uh, how does a bridge work? Uh, hey, you're starting to understand what a bridge is. What's the security mechanism? You know, all these kind of things. Again, the crypto experience is very very complex, and so all a lot of the solutions that are. Uh, that, that that are that are working in the space are now. I agree that we need to improve the user experience of the users. And so you can see different uh, drives, different um, angles that this has been tackled. One is show account abstraction. Uh, the other one is onboarding, for example, the KYC part. And then there is a problem on how do we, uh, how do we really simplify the, the existing fragmentation uh, that the modular thesis has created uh, so the, the idea that you know, ethereum is a central hub and then there are the hundreds if not thousands of layer twos and layer threes really helps uh, ethereum to scale but it has the um the counterpoint of being one extremely more clunky for the average users to navigate this world and number two creating all the uh, kind of very isolated and fragmented liquidity and uh uh, and kind of, and and, um, and 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 creating extra silos in general, and so the interoperability space has really been about connecting, uh, uh, making the the fragmentation feeling less fragmented, make, making this modular the uh, world feeling less fragmented. Um, so this is what we've been working on for, for a while already, as you were saying, Stefan. We introduced the term chain abstraction uh, more than one year ago. Uh, and since then, we've been trying to lead a little bit the ecosystem into into this direction. So, why has that not happened yet? I think there are at least three main reasons why we, we are not there as a, as a general industry. Um, the first one is uh, general awareness. I think uh, we're still living a little bit in a bubble. Uh, when I, when I talk to apps, uh, it's still they still. Uh, uh, they're still mind blown by the idea that they can allow deposits of of any token basically from any other chain. They don't have to become multi chain apps. They have to. They can just be uh, deploying on one chain and then allow these inflows from any other chains. 
And so uh, there is a lack of uh, being aware that these solutions exist already. They are mature enough, they are uh, efficient, and uh, and then kind of like really helps you do a, a 10x uh, improvement on, on your user experience. Even I think the other day, Vitalik um, posted a screenshot of Polymarket, which is a very hyped uh, app today with the uh, US elections, saying, hey, this is not how deposit should look like, showing a screenshot of deposit on Polygon. Uh, the, 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 the idea should just be that you deposit USDC wherever you have the funds, and then uh, the, the, the existence of the chains is actually abstracted. Uh, so you know, the, the, you know, if you see the comments, you will like, like, okay, oh, this is still not still not as mainstream as it should be. Um, so I think, yeah, we we need to work first of all on awareness, and so I guess you know, the, the work that you guys are doing, the community uh, helps a lot, right? Being very uh, vocal advocates about this is uh, is definitely helpful, uh, which which joins with with the second second part, which I, I would define as uh, education. Um, there are still people that even if they are aware of the chain abstraction as a solution, as solu as a very like, um, umbrella of solutions that exist today, they're still not convinced that it's actually the best solution for crypto, which is very interesting for me. I, I was reading a tweet from Mark from Layer Zero the other day, and was saying, um, the problem I have with chain abstraction is that destination chain is the most important part of the transaction. Chains have vibes, and as a user, I want to be opinionated on those vibes by choosing where to deposit funds. Which is definitely, you know, I can definitely see an angle out of it. Um, but I think it misses the point that, you know, we like the vibes of the chains because everybody who will be listening to this space, everybody who is participating right now, is a ultimately a, a nerd early adopter of the space, right? And uh, that's why we like to vibe with, with, the, with the chains. That's why we, we probably own a few bags of every chain. So that's why we feel attached to those chains. But I don't feel particularly attached on uh, Amazon AWS, on uh, Microsoft Azure when, when, I, when I use a website. And so I don't go and check what happens in the background. And so this is the experience that we really need to envision for the user in the future, right? Really, really using all the applications without almost knowing that they're using a blockchain and specifically without knowing which blockchain to use. Like it, it might, might be, it will be important for builders, like for people that have to rely on the security to create the right stack for the applications. But I think gradually we'll see that as a, a diminishing importance for users. Uh, that's why you know, the older conversation about who is attracting more values, apps, is, is, is chains, and so on. But I think yeah, the, the important part about education is like okay, let let's convince everyone that this is the best solution to bring the next billion people on chain, uh, which is abstracting the complexity, the fragmentation of this multi-chain world. And then when we, when we talk to uh, builders, which are the ones that instead would be uh, appreciating the, the nuances of the different chains and the different and how this chain abstraction stack work uh, stack works. Uh, then maybe explain him, you know, explain them how what are the, what are the actual security risks. I think we, we got to a nice point where through intents and solvers we're getting to uh, the right compromise between full uh, trust minimization and um, nice user experience. Uh, the, the, the big, uh, you know, the big um, intent-based protocols like um, across, you know, connects with, with the current bridge UI, but also router protocols, sign ups, they're, they're all quite trust minimized. And so we got to the state where these things are secure and at the same time they're nice. And so we, we need to keep educating both builders and uh, the other users on, um, on how their experience is going to change and how it's going to improve. Um, very last bit, um, the economics part. I think that's the third kind of key element to really enhance the chain, of, chain of, the adoption of chain abstraction, which is okay. We are creating these all these intent-based protocols, 
uh, that are relying on solvers or relying on these entities that are executing actions on behalf of the users in exchange for the commission. But the question is, are the solvers profitable? Like, how can we make, how can we help those solvers make more money so that we can attract more solvers so that we can do more stuff across different chains so we can have this network of solvers going to more chains as well because there is more money to be made. And this is the last piece that was missing until now. And this is where we as Everclear now has, has decided to, to focus on, on together. Like improving the economics of the system allows one to, uh, to make those solvers more profitable, which is key for the whole industry to, to keep working. And two, to uh, simultaneously reduce the cost for users when doing these cross-chain transactions or these chain abstracted transactions. So we don't have to, you know, they, they don't, uh, it's not a friction, the cost is not a friction anymore. So they, when, when you're moving uh, assets across the different chains, you don't have to pay a, any significant or even noticeable amount of money but it all becomes seamless and fluid. So the, the cross-chain transactions becomes a very, uh, a very small component of the whole overall cost of the transactions. So this is where we want to go, and this is what we want to focus on as ever clear. Awesome. So uh, to your point on education, uh, that's kind of what we are trying to do with like these spaces and generally in our work uh, with the community. Uh, we know we live in a, a very uh, competitive attention market, basically. Uh, attention is scarce and people it's hard to get people to care about what you're offering. But uh, I think that even though we like started this proposing this vision of uh, chain abstraction like more than a year ago, uh, it's now like clearly taking like a, a mainstream interest and yeah, it's it's really nice to to feel like uh, vindicated for for being early with our ideas, and uh, yeah. So, uh, talking about Everclear, um, how have this how have the last two months uh, been? Like, what's the state of Everclear currently? Uh, what does the future look like? Yeah, good question. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, we. We announced Everclear at the beginning of June, right? So it's it's been quite a very e eclectic journey so far uh, because we did the announcement uh, with an early, very early stage of testnet. And now we are rushing towards, not rushing, but running definitely uh, towards mainnet, um, which will be the culmination of everything that we've been doing this month. And so, uh, one one thing that we realized we decided to work on was very clear is that we wanted to uh, collaborate and not compete with uh, or everybody else. Uh, I think that the biggest innovation of ever clear is that every partner that joins in is a actually benefits the overall ecosystem. It benefits themselves and it benefits the overall ecosystem. So. Uh, I don't feel like vindicating vindicated when when uh, we talk about when other people talk about chain abstraction, but I actually feel that we are all converging and specializing into small pieces, and then by working together, we can uh, we can really provide benefits for everybody: the users, the solvers, the, uh, the, the cross chain protocols, and ultimately uh, Everclear as well, and and the fragmented all the all the layer tools that they want to get involved. So this this um, this past few months has, has been focused on executing on that vision of creating uh, an ecosystem where different entities can collaborate. And when I say that, literally everybody wins if there are more entities coming together. Uh, it like the, the logic is pretty simple with that. If uh, the objective of Eraclear is to be a clearing system uh, for volume that happens across the different chains. In the moment that a, a new solver joins the system, a new intent protocol, intent-based protocol joins the system and wants to add more, more of their flow into the system, all of a sudden 
their flows, their rebalancing, so their, their rebalancing liquidity becomes cheaper and everybody else becomes cheaper as well because we are all contributing to the netting of the same volume. So what, what I what I like and what I've been, we've been working on in these weeks is helping people understand this, this, uh, this new concept and onboarding them with the vision that yeah, the more is actually the merrier for once. It's like a non-competing environment, very collaborative, where uh, more people means more money for, for everyone. Thank you, Max. So basically a win-win solution in the ecosystem. That's yeah, great to hear. Um, for all the DGENs outside here, um, waiting for new upcoming announcements and everything, do you have anything new it is on the horizon that you can share with us at this point in time for example ECE bridging uh, through hyperlane or anything like that do you have anything that you can share with us at this stage bah, there will be quite some changes in uh in, in how i mean in in uh in the in, so the protocol is being restructured from from zero basically re rebuilt from zero as you know, it's becoming a, a roll-up. It's becoming this ticketing system where, well, ticketing, I'm not sure if that's the right word, this, this voucher system uh, where anybody can, can, can be rebalanced of, of, the, um, yeah, of, the, of the tokens that they, they want to move around. Um, I'm not sure if there is any specific news that, <laughs> that, that, that the DJ will be interested in, but we are working on, we're looking at Everclear now from a holistic perspective. So we are supporting initiatives that are uh, you know, looking at the ecosystem expansion for sure, uh, new assets that are being onboarded for sure. We are looking in particular at uh, yield bearing assets, so either stable coins that you, bear yield or uh, ETH uh, kind of deriv der derivatives. But we're also, uh, you know, supporting other initiatives that are looking at the tokenomics of um, next. Uh, you know, as Everclear is a, a full new system, uh, I think a, a revamp of the uh, of the tokenomics is, is is well needed in terms of how is the token part of the uh, of this new protocol that is being launched. It's um, uh, the, the token has been underutilized so far. Uh, on 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 an on chain level, let's say I think it, 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 we've done a great job on the uh, on the DAO. That even if it's early, if it, even if it's not uh, extremely big, it, it has made a lot of progress on this decentralization and the uh, and the uh, different in community driven initiatives. Let's say, but the token will definitely need to have a, a more central role in I think for for ever clear and so. Uh, this is where some of the initiatives that are in progress uh, across the you know, across the different uh, members of the connect the ever connective collective uh, are doing. Um, and then, I mean, because we you know, we we see other bridges as a uh, as partners now, I think our approach to to bridge themselves will change, uh, like. It, Connects has ever had the desire to position itself lower in the stack, meaning not being necessarily user facing. And I think now, as we are even going lower compared to where we were before, that vision is coming to reality. So, you know, our, uh, I think users themselves will interact well, less with Everclear, but the overall volume, the overall flows that will go through Everclear will be much, much more as more protocols join to use this this clearing system that doesn't make sense guys <laughs> i've been too too vague <laughs> yeah totally <laughs> um okay so you mentioned that uh yeah you mentioned that we are in a very like working in a very collaborative environment and uh, working closely with our partners seeing like the whole system of us like yeah, like a whole solution, basically, uh, not just Everclear itself uh, in a silo over there, and that everyone that integrates Everclear or that, um, like, yeah, collaborates with us, basically, uh, will get um, 
benefits from it and in the, in the end the end users which are the people that uh, matter because otherwise we wouldn't be here yeah uh, they get benefited from this um there have been some developments developments recently like for example uh the bridging of uh renzo eth through hyperlane um can you talk a bit about uh this kind of developments and how does like the xcrc20 uh, token standard play a role in everclear yeah um so the, the idea of the xrc20 is really uh, to be this bridge agnostic standard token standard that allows tokens to move across the different chains without being locked in into one single bridge. And so we have, um, you know, the best example happened a few weeks ago where uh, Renzo and its Easy ETH added uh, Ever uh, Hyperlane as, a, uh, as another bridge that is allowed to move the token. Uh, the reason that we, we did that is one, of course, uh, uh, Hyperlane is a very close partner to us. It would be the transport uh, layer for Everclear. So we would use its infrastructure, its infrastructure to move data across the different chains. Um, and then you know, the beauty of uh, Hyper, Hyperlane is that it allows, it, it can be, it can expand uh, permissionlessly to all the different chains. Uh, so this was a key requirement for uh, Renzo to move fast to new chains. And so, you know, as, as good partners, we didn't want to be a roadblock for, for them. Like Connect, the current version of Connect is still not able to uh, have that type of fast expansion, while the long, term, the long vision of Everclear includes them. So we do want to be able to permissionlessly expand to new chains, and that would be kind of a, a, a huge catalyst for growth as imagine uh, somebody going on a roll-up as a service, picking up a roll-up, a new roll-up, a new layer two with the Arbitrum's Orbit stack, for example, and then uh, uh, Everclear comes out of the box and then helps you to uh, get liquidity on that chain back and forth uh, in, in both inflow and outflows. And so for now, because we, we don't have the capability to expand fast to new chains and Renzo had this, this willingness, uh, we introduced them to Hyperlane and then we will work together to design a solution that uh, works for everybody uh, so that easy can now be moved also by the Hyperlane bridge. And I think that's great as a, as a, uh, as, as a, you know, as a message and as a, as a collaboration uh, output, the fact that you know, we're demonstrating that CRC20 is really a bridge agnostic, agnostic standard. Um, there's nothing that stops people, uh, prevents people to uh, not using Everclear or Connect if they want it, if they wanted to. Uh, but you know, this was much needed in the industry to uh, ridicule something that didn't belong to anybody in particular. Uh, and yeah, so um, I think it, it was a good outcome for um, for us, for Hyperlane, and for Renzo ultimately. And then as soon as we are able to, you know, to, to launch a clear, become permissionless, I think we will we'll see a lot of new assets deploying, uh, whitelisting Everclear for this couple type of capabilities. That would be really interesting to see. Yeah, I definitely agree here. And you've earlier mentioned, Max, that the team is right now building the future as we speak, working hard on Everclear, bringing this all live. So perhaps if you can share with us what the next steps are that are taking us towards mainnet, can you give us a, an outlook on um, what we can expect and um, especially um, obviously what the next steps are that are bringing us live? Yeah, I, it's a good question, Stefan. I, I don't have uh, you know, all the details um simply because when you're building this type of technologies estimating precise timeline we've seen over and over and it doesn't work so our estimation is to be live in around uh five weeks if uh, everything goes right um they've started an audit already mm -hmm. i'm expecting the audit to come back with some results there will be some adjustments to make um 
And so we, you know, that, that's the, that's the ideal timeline. I, I would say that, you know, it, it will still take a little bit to validate everything. So after, even after launch, there will be a phase of, um, fine tuning around different elements because right now what is happening is that from one side the product is being built, right? It's, it's, it's being built on, uh, as a tool for solvers to rebalance their portfolio for intent-based protocols to uh, have the flow actually include Everclear directly. So it becomes a one smooth experience for their solvers. The product has been built for market makers who will help in netting out um, these, these flows. As you were mentioning in the beginning, Stefan, the 80% of the flows can be netted out every day but it rest 20% requires some market incentives for external parties to actually help netting. And so these are other parties that will be involved. And so you have to build something for them. You have to build a dashboard for them. You have to build a tool that they can use. And so this is what all the you know, work in progress is. But then there is another part, which is around the pure economics of it, right? If you, if you wait 24 hours, uh, you can wait, you can, uh, net 80% of the flows, okay? Uh, which means that potentially 80% of the of the transfers can be almost free because they're just netted with somebody else on the other side. But then the, the, of course, like the trade-off is that you have to wait 24 hours. And so what if we want to shorten that time? What if we shorten it to 12 hours, 12 hours, six hours, three hours, one hour, right? The, uh, the economics of the game kind of change and so, we will, we, we, we're trying now to model it and fine tune that, but I think the real proof will happen once we get on chain, right? Once we get on chain, we will see how much cheaper can we actually bring the transaction, if we can actually bring this netting depending on how many partners we launch uh, on, uh, on day one, right? Versus how many partners we line in three months, in six months. And so um, we will have to continuously fine tune these elements until we, we get to a point where Transactions are rebalanced as fast as possible, but also as cheap as possible. Uh, and then, yeah, of course, everybody is, uh, I guess, the right economic incentives to participate in the system. So lots of... Thank you very much. Lots of Max. progress. Uh, awesome. Yeah, hopefully by, uh, you know, in the next few weeks, we'll have <laughs> that famous 80% of the stuff figured out and the rest will come as, the, as we go live. Yeah, thank you very much, Max, for, for the answer. It's definitely appreciated. And so sorry for putting you in this place. Obviously, we had to ask, a question, uh, we had to ask this question. It, it's really um, interests many people. And of course, we all know that there are so many pieces that need to be put into place. And my philosophy is always to say, give the team the time it takes to ship a really good and functioning product. And uh, time doesn't matter so much. Yeah, one hundred percent. As long as everything. Absolutely. At the same time, you know, I think we we should do a better job at, uh, of work, uh, building in public. It's. Um, I think it's been part of our philosophy, but we never managed to express it properly. And uh, now that you know we are in this stage of uh, creating this win-win market, I think we should we should do better, and uh, we'll try to make a better effort in that sense. Love it. Yeah. That's, I think that's really appreciated by the community. Definitely. So Andy, Andy, you, you had a question as well. Yeah. Well, having, um, answered the DJ questions, maybe we can move into something a little more technical. It's very interesting to me, at least. Um, we have thought about in the past, um, well, we, we kind of pushed on our side, the concept of X ERC 20 tokens and thinking about tokens as like natively cross-chain and i was wondering how xrc20 like the protocol itself plays a role in everclear and kind of if you can expand on um what is a settlement um kind of protocol or a settlement mechanism in that case and also like if it makes sense to expand more on the programmable settlement uh, concept. Um, I think that would be uh, 
kind of an all-rounded question that's really interesting to me and uh yeah it's it will get technical uh, i assume Uh, yeah, let me try. It's, it's not it's not very technical. I mean, I'm not a super technical person, so uh, I cannot really deep dive into that. But I think the logical part is very uh, is very nice and and very exciting at the same time because the principle of Everclear is that we have this uh, platform, which is a, a, a layer two, where you can design how to rebalance the value that exists on two different chains right so no, no rebalance like how do you um how do you transfer how do you transfer in the cheapest way value from one chain to another one and how do you program that let me, let me explain what i mean so at the, at the basic level ever clear as we said is a, is a netting system so there is a solver on arbitrum that wants to rebalance the portfolio of funds on uh, on uh, Arbitrum and they want to get, uh, sorry, the, the, the server is on Arbitrum but their funds are on Optimism because they, uh, the user previously did in transa in transaction in the opposite way. And on the other side, there is instead a server on uh, Optimism who has some funds that are still on Arbitrum uh, and they want to get the funds back to on Optimism. And so these guys have clear coincidence of wants the uh, the easiest way to have the tokens move <laughs> to, to the different chains is simply to swap them with each other, right? So the uh, the tokens of the solver A will go to solver B and vice versa. So this is the cheapest way, and this is ultimately the most basic and, and cheapest um, strategy that you can have to rebalance the portfolio of the solvers. Uh, because here in this case, the cost is basically zero, right? They have to waste some time, but uh, the cost, uh, they don't have to move any tokens, so the cost is zero. If the strategy is not available, right, the system is able to look at uh, other ways to do this form of rebalancing. Basically, the, the system will have programmed uh, for every asset and for, for every chain, uh, will have programmed the best way if, it, if netting is not is not available, to actually remove remove the, the funds wherever the solver wants to wants to move them. Uh, let's do some uh, easy examples. Um, one is the XRC twenty, right? Let's say that there is an XRC twenty token like Easy East, where Everclear has the right to mint and burn the the asset. So first, the system looks at the first strategies, which is always netting. Say, okay, is there anybody who is going in the other direction that we can net out. Let's wait for a little bit. No, let's wait for a little bit. No, okay, it's not available. What happens next? Okay, it's an XRC20. We can actually burn the tokens on the origin chain and mint it on the other chain. Well, that's cheap, let's do it. And so the system falls into the second option and then uh, looks at the, the other strategy and tries to execute it. So it's an XRC20, yes, I can mint and burn it. And so. Is it uses as another strategy the set to, to settle the transaction, the, the ability to mint and burn the tokens. The, the token is not an XRC20, but it's uh, USDC, for example. Again, first strategy, they will always look at netting, not available. Uh, XRC20 is not available. Uh, USDC. USDC is uh, a, uh, a, a token where uh, circle as the ability again to mint and burn by the CCIP protocol. Okay, are these two chains that are connected uh, on the CCIP protocol? Good. Yes, good. Do, do we have the power to uh, instruct Circle to mint and burn those tokens? Yes, we will have. We're, we're working with them, and so we'll we'll be integrating CCIP not at launch, but a little bit later. So uh, when we'll be when that will be live, we'll be able to say, okay. Uh, no, this token needs to be rebalanced. There is no way to net them. Let's go for another strategy. And so on and so forth. Right? The idea is to add continuous new strategies so that we can get to the cheapest version of this settlement phase, which is the most critical one for solvers because ultimately the term is how much money they can make and how much money they have to charge for users. So how cheap the cross-chain cross transactions needs to be. At launch, there will basically only be two strategies plus the XRC20 token, the XRC21, so three. Uh, there will be a, um, the netting one, as we said, as a default one. And the second one is a, 
an auction system, uh, which is why we, we also involve, are involving market makers into, uh, into the equation of, of the ecosystem. Um, the, the auction strategy basically says, okay, nobody is available to net these transactions one-to-one. So what happens is that we basically put into a Dutch auction the value of the voucher that needs to be rebalanced. In theory, that voucher is worth one, right? I, I, I've deployed 1,000 USDC and I'm expecting 1,000 as, as much as possible on the other chain. So at the beginning, that voucher is worth 1,000 USDC. If somebody comes with 1,000 USDC on the other side, if the voucher is worth equal, so they, it's just netted. Let's say it's not available, nobody's available. So the, the, the Dutch auction starts. So the value of that voucher, which was initially worth um, 1,000 USDC, starts to gradually decrease. And so it becomes 999, 998, 997. At some point, somebody wants to do an arbitrage, somebody who wants to make money out of it says, hey, I have 995 uh, uh, USDC. I can give you, uh, I can buy this voucher basically for that amount of price. And in exchange, I will give, will give you the tokens on the other chains because I have them, right? So they come to arbitrage this, this operation and they are incentivized to do that because the price continuously lowers down uh, the value of, of that voucher, which is basically an I, owe, I own you money from Everclear to the solver. So that's a very, those are the very two very most general strategies that are, will be available at launch, right? The pure netting and this auction system. Um, and um, uh, that's how the system becomes, you know, self-sustainable and like economically incentivized by uh, the market itself to run. Uh, but then that's also when we have to start uh, tweaking a little bit the parameters. Like how, how long do we want to wait until this Dutch, Dutch auction starts? Um, how, you know, like uh, what, what, uh, what, are, what is the expectation of netting across one hour versus two hours? Like all these kind of things have to be uh, tuned, as you said. And so once we're live, <laughs> we're starting to model that. And then once we're live, it will be first validated or adjusted. Andy, does it, does it answer your question? Does it make sense? Perfectly, perfectly. Thank you. Yeah, it's very interesting, and um, it sort of paves the way into a true like permissionless mechanism. And it's yeah, it's what we're here for. One hundred percent. So, Max, with the um, recent rebranding, we've seen a couple of community members asking us: Is there anything that we need to do after the rebrand? Do we? need to be active do we need to change tokens switch anything or is there anything that we need to keep in mind um since connects has rebranded to everclear and i think you definitely have a wonderful and perfectly good answer to the community as there is not that much you need to do right yeah not in the um, operational part i would say but um yeah i would say you know if you are intrigued by the vision of what we're doing like Dig, 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 dig more into clearing and everything that we're doing. And then if you want to support, of course, you're more than welcome. Uh, you know, we know the initiatives that are, that are driven by the community leaders, the community moderators. Uh, I think there is a massive need to be an advocate of uh, Everclear because it's such a powerful solution that it really succeeds if uh, there are a lot of participants into the system. Um, and so, yeah, that's what we're trying to do internally uh, in, in the ecosystem team. And then any help supporting that side is uh, more than appreciated and more than valuable. Wonderful. Thank you, Max. One question that we've seen also raised in the community, and perhaps you can talk about a bit about this because I think that's really relevant and interesting, is um, what the fees would be that are associated with Everclear. And um, I think because with the netting of transactions, um, there's this huge value proposition to everybody participating in this network and um, utilizing Everclear um, that they benefit definitely from lower fees. Can you perhaps speak a bit about that? Yeah, um, I, don't, I don't have a specific figure simply because the fees that the system will be charging are 
obviously directed as solvers or people that are willing to wait a, a non-negligible amount of time, say one hour, half an hour, in order to move the tokens. And so user the expectation is that users will instead use uh, the intent-based bridges built on top of Everclear, um, which will charge something more on top of what Everclear does uh, in order to, of course, be profitable and provide a service. And so for Everclear, I think that there is not a um, an existing answer right now uh, on, on the fees that will be charged. It will be dynamic based on the chains and the assets, right? From, on a route like Arbitrum and Optimism, Arbitrum and Base, maybe there are two, top two AL2s today, the fees will be very low because uh, there is a lot of volume that goes back and forth. Uh, if, you're, if you're talking about, uh, you know, a, a very long tail chains instead, we have to charge more because the, the flow will be um, yeah, less evident, less less uh, uh, impactful, and so there will be less to net. And so yeah, there, there, there needs to be the right economic incentives for the for the system to work. But our estimation is that we can really reduce the average fee of cross-chain transactions in the market by 8x, 8x which is a pretty impressive number if you, if you think about it. Yeah, that's definitely impressive. And just if you think about it, all the um, cost savings and obviously the competitive advantages that you can generate just with this um, cost reduction is impressive. And I think once more projects are catching up to this, I think um, it will be really interesting to see who else is going to join um, all the early partners that we have um, already announced since the rebranding, for example, like Hyperlane, the graph, Celestia, Eigenlayer, Arbitrum, and I think that list is very long. So, yeah, thank you very much for this answer. Yeah, absolutely, and um, yeah, we, we, I think I think we'll see. Uh, and you know, the, the cheapest, the cheaper Everclear can be, the cheaper the bridging protocols can be, and the cheaper the, the users can transact across the different chains. So it's uh, again, it trickles down to everyone in a very beneficial way. Wonderful. So Max, we really want to be appreciative of your time. Um, we've also already taken about one hour of your time already. So we just wanted to thank you for taking the time and giving all um, the really impressive and insightful answers and taking out uh, taking this time to talk to us, to the community. So we really wanted to thank you for all your answers and um, Basically, thank you for joining us and answering all the questions and um, yeah, to be mindful of your time. I think it's great to end here. We just wanted to give you a really nice, uh, sh short shout out to the Arbitrum campaign. Um, bridging Arbitrum, bridging ETH uh, to Arbitrum is giving you 95% of the fees as part of the liquidity incentivization campaign. So be sure to um, utilize that. Max, if you want to go ahead, shout out um, the campaign. Anything else um, as last words that you have to say to the community, feel free to share with us, obviously. No, I think that's good. Thank you for having me, guys. It's been a pleasure. Wonderful. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. It's been a really great time hanging out with you. Thanks, everybody, for listening in. And especially um, a huge thank you to Max from the team and also my co-host, Tommy and Andy, for joining us and helping with the interview and the AMA and to hang out. So thank you everybody for joining. And I hope the next time we do this hangout, we have more news about Everclear to share with you. So thank you very much.